The Safe Drinking Water Act requires the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to establish maximum contaminant levels for numerous organic contaminants. Communities must sample for some specific organic contaminants, plus several unregulated contaminants. Organic contaminants generally fall into one of the following categories. Volatile organic chemicals, VOCs, pesticides, or disinfection byproducts, DBPs. Organic compounds are carbon-based. Hydrocarbons, solvents, herbicides, and pesticides are in this category. Because organic compounds are frequently light-sensitive, special organic-free amber containers are used for sample collection. These bottles usually have Teflon spacers in the caps in order to prevent chemical leaching, as well as to allow for a needle to be inserted into the sample during analysis without introducing air-water contact. When sampling for volatile organic compounds, the bottle should be filled to the very top so there is no air bubble or head space, which would cause the loss of volatile compounds. The sample should be head space free. Conversely, when sampling for semi-volatile or non-volatile compounds, head space or a small volume of air at the top is allowed. That is, no air space in VOC sampling. There can be air space in semi-volatile or non-volatile compounds. VOC samples are often taken on a quarterly or annual basis and are typically analyzed by a contract laboratory. The lab should provide containers containing a dechlorinating agent. The lab should also provide a separate preservative, generally an acid. Acidification or preservation of the sample is done at the time of sample collection by the sampler. Trip blanks or travel blanks are samples filled with reagent water. The blanks serve as control specimens and accompany the actual samples through the entire trip from the lab to the sample site and back. Handle and package the trip blanks the same as you would the samples, but never open them. VOC samples are point of entry, that is the point at which finished drinking water enters the distribution system. Some plants have permanent sample taps for this purpose. If yours does not, select the sample location carefully. Generally, for all sample tap use, except lead, remove any aerator before sample collection. Begin by adequately flushing the sample tap to ensure the sample is representative of the source. This may take from three to five minutes. While the tap is flushing, label the container. All sample containers should be properly labeled with the utility or water provider's name, name of collector, date and time of the sampling, and the sample location. Any sample code or pre-assigned sample number, parameters to be analyzed, and preservatives, if any. Next, adjust the flow so the bottle may be filled without splashing or aerating the sample. Excessive bubbling of the sample may result in the loss of VOCs. Do not adjust the flow while filling. Be careful not to set the cap down or contaminate the inside of the cap or vial. Hold the cap by the outside, down and away from the sampling site. Tip the vial slightly and place it under the stream of water so the water flows down the inside wall. If the container contains a preservative, be careful not to rinse it out or overfill the bottle enough to significantly dilute any preservatives used. Fill the bottle to the shoulder or to about one quarter inch from the top. Carefully add any additional required preservative if needed. If using an acid preservative, use caution and appropriate personal protection, such as safety glasses or gloves. Immediately rinse off any acid that comes in contact with skin or clothing. Top off the container. This is done by pouring water from the cap into the vial. When the bottle is full, there should be a convex or crescent shape to the water over the lip of the container. Carefully replace the cap, tighten and invert to check for bubbles. If a bubble is present, remove the cap and top off the container. Cap and check again to ensure there is no headspace. Place the container into an ice chest and turn off the faucet. Finish filling out the chain of custody form and then transport the sample to the lab for analysis. After sample collection and during transit to the laboratory, place the samples in a cooler to a temperature below 4 degrees Celsius by adding bagged ice or ice packs.